getting into Squirrel Rescue for me was about meeting a need uh, at the same time, uh, well, the, where the need meets the resources. It was about meeting a need and having the resources to uh, meet it. I've always wanted to work with animals. My son, um, who has autism, I'm a carer for him, decided he wanted to work with animals as well. I think the need for grey squirrels is the greatest and they're a kind of uh, semi-companion animal for many people, for generation rent, who can't have uh, companion animals in their home. They form relationships with squirrels, they come to their garden, they meet them at lunchtime at work, um, and of course then when something happens to those squirrels or they're young, there should be a rescue pathway and there very often isn't. Another problem is that uh, you need a license to keep and release grey squirrels, and for many rescue centres this is intimidating. So Henry was the eldest male, and then there was a female Zoe. Those two were roughly the same size, roughly the same age, and then there were two smaller ones. Franklin was a male and Louise was the female. The Louise, the youngest female, was extremely shy, spends most of the time in the house, but does come out occasionally. Um, the rest of them are quite boi boisterous, so uh, Henry and, uh, and Louise spend an awful lot of time together. They left together, they chased each other around the tree. Franklin is, um, he's a bit of a teenager, so he's the consummate acrobat, extremely entertaining to watch, and just naughty. <laughs> They've kept us busy, but it's been, uh, it's been magic, I think. A day of release, now that is a very bittersweet thing. You know, you want them to go off, but you know you're going to miss them, because you do get attached to them. They're all, they've all got their individual little characters, and it's, yeah, they're so easy to love. Just before Christmas last year, all the rescue centres that deal with um, alien species got a, a nasty Christmas present, uh, an email from Natural England saying that as of, uh, well, as it, then it, well, we were told as of uh, the end of March, all uh, our licences are revoked and we'll have to euthanise any squirrels that are found on our premises. I think if that legislation does come through, it's, it'll be awful. And I, I, think, I think it's been over harshly interpreted by the UK legislature because the EU have said there is there's no intention that uh, the grey squirrel should be eradicated from the UK or that the raccoon should be eradicated from Germany. They, they uh, have not said that. It does make me angry. I don't see the point of it. Uh, there's only about six or seven hundred rescued squirrels that are released back into the wild which virtually makes no difference to the overall population but it makes an awful lot of difference difference to the person and that particular squirrel. For many people it's an ethical issue as well. They wouldn't want to keep an animal in captivity. So really it's like a hospital that cannot discharge patients. If a rescue cannot release then we won't be able to take in any new animals, so it's, that is really no concession at all. Squirrels need a, a variety of experiences, not just food and exercise and mental stimulation. They also need the whole community of other species, of uh, an opportunity to move, to explore, to decide whether to migrate or not. And without this, you're not really meeting their needs. Even the biggest possible aviary would, would limit that. And of course, we say better that than dead. Uh, but where it is unnecessary, a squirrel that can be returned to the wild certainly should, should do so. It, it makes life quite difficult for us because obviously we could treat more if we were given the opportunity to. Um, we've had the threat of the licence being taken away during this year and it's been quite uncomfortable so they've extended it twice now. But that hasn't helped us because we've already got to the number that we can take in. So the thought of actually not having a licence at all is almost too much to bear because that means we can't take in anything. The other danger is of course that members of the public are going to, to not take them to end a vet or not bring them to us and then not get the treatment so it's going to actually cause more harm than good 
um, and it means that injured squirrels, if people don't want to take them to the vet to be put to sleep, which is quite right, they want to give them a chance, then they might try and have a go themselves. And if they're left and they have got a jaw injury and their teeth are misaligned, then they're going to have a horrible death out there. And, you know, so it's actually very detrimental to the animals. It will be a major ethical issue for a lot of people who volunteer in a big wildlife rescue centre suddenly to be told, oh no, we'll have to euthanise these uh, animals because they are invasive aliens who have been here for 150 years. I can't think of another situation where British citizens are forced into choosing between the law of the land and the law of morality. Collared doves arrived in this country just by chance in the 1940s. They're well established and people are used to them, so why can't people get used to the grey squirrels? I think they're being used as a scapegoat, but for what? They certainly haven't had an impact on the red squirrels because they have always been persecuted as well in the past, and their demise um, is due to our impact on reducing their natural habitat. The UK in particular has one of the worst records in biodiversity. Um, we are 189th out of 219 countries, I think, at present, in terms of how the biodiversity that's been lost. Um, there's a lot of persecution of wild animals, I think, in this country. There's, uh, there's still fox hunting going on, there's badger calls and so on. I think it's very important to preserve the wild animals that we have. They're extremely entertaining. There have been studies done uh, that squirrels in particular, both red and grey, are ecologically um, very useful to have around for in terms of tree growth, forest growth, and we want to preserve, I think, our, our wildlife. It's important that we have that. And it's extremely entertaining. I'd much rather look at them than uh, the, the fact that some people go around and, and enjoy killing them is, uh, is abhorrent. Of it. Our job um, in the wildlife rescue is to save the animals and give them a second chance. We're not here to kill animals. The license from Natural England is trying to get all rescue centres to kill animals that are surplus to their licensing system, which is not acceptable by any means. This idea that our native has to be protected at the price of uh, killing other animals, that is morally very worrying. Yes, of course we love our native land, we love our native animals, we love our native family, but if that spills over into and we hate everything that is not native, that is not ours, that is not our family. That is where it becomes highly problematic. So no, this legislation, I, I see it as pointless, heartless, and as Steve said, draconian.